romantic nude Maja and the clothed Maja by Francisco Goya in 1800 to 1803 that are located in the Museo Nacional de Prado were extremely radical paintings for their time, so much so that they were confiscated during the Spanish Inquisition for being, quote, so indecent and prejudicial to the public good. Yes, just like the romantic style of stirring up passion, this set of oil paintings not only stirred up passion, but also shock and anger. The figure in both works is unidentified, but is presumed to be either the mistress of Prime Minister Manuel de Godoy or Goya himself. The figures are curved and elongated, and the paintings were found during the Spanish Inquisition in the Prime Minister's secret collection, so we can conclude that this series was made for the male gaze. Let's start with the nude Maja, the first of the series. The nude matcha was considered profane because female pubic hair is visible, the figure is nude, and there are no excuses for her being in the nude. Unlike early Spanish works, the figure is fully aware that she is nude and that she is being observed as she stares boldly at the viewer. She displays no modesty as she pulls her arms back to expose her chest. She gives the viewer a full frontal view and her pubis is the center of the composition. On the whole, a very sexual and bold work. And the clothed matcha actually works to accentuate that fact. The clothed Maja makes the nude Maja even more radically nude because her modern style dress informs the viewer that the Maja is not a mythological figure like in Velázquez's Raquette Venus, but that she is an ordinary and modern nude woman. It seems Goya wanted to shock people and stir up their passion, a romantic idea, but through a non-conventional method. Some accounts state that the clothed Maja was placed in front of the nude Maja in galleries, and then a cord was pulled to reveal the nude Maja underneath. And if we look at the painting, Olympia, by Monet in 1863, that is now in the Musée d'Orsay Paris, we see a similar idea of using nudity in clothing to promote a radical depiction of the female figure. The flower in her hair and the black ribbon tied around her neck are clear signs that the female figure is a prostitute. We are also shown her reclining on a couch or bed of some kind, covered in white sheets. Here we see a bold transformation of symbols, as white is a symbol of purity, but the subject of prostitute is not. Perhaps this is representative of the new depiction of the female figure Monet creates to challenge the established one. While the Maja and Olympia share a radically nude theme, there is a stark contrast about how and why the two subjects, the nude Maja and Olympia, are nude. Olympia is depicted as covering her sexual organs in a powerful manner, and therefore restricting herself from men by demonstrating her control and her body as her domain. The nude Maja, however, is fully aware that she is nude and is accentuating that fact, with her arms behind her head, fully exposing her chest, as if to open herself up for the benefit of the male gaze. The power dynamics are completely different. Olympia rejects the male gaze, while the Maja encourages it. And if we look back at Olympia, we see how the painting as a whole is almost rejecting the academic ideas of that time period. We are shown imperfections in her body, including body fat, and like the Maja, she looks directly at the viewer and acknowledges their presence. We also see how there is no idealization of the body or elongation of any body parts, while the nude and clothed Maja are extremely idealized.